Hey, Alex here, and this Tuesday is Giving Tuesday, and Amen Podcast is a 501c3 religious organization nonprofit. We are ad-free and able to re-preach every episode that you hear live at our house church in Kauai, Hawaii, because of support from listeners like you. If you feel led to join our ministry through prayer or financial support, please visit amenpodcast.com for more information. Aloha and welcome to Amen Podcast, where we preach the good news of Jesus Christ and how it applies to everyday life. I'm Lokilani, your host, and I'm joined by my husband, Alex, who is the preacher of this podcast. Christians are called to be childlike, not childish. And in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus explains that religious people are hard to please. Sometimes they don't want truth, and sometimes they don't want grace. And just like a child who can't make up their mind on what to eat, they're hungry, but nothing sounds good to them. If you find yourself unpleased with your relationship with God or unable to please people in your life who seem bent on opposing you, in this episode, my husband Alex will be preaching about leaving childish faith behind and choosing to give your all to God. If this sermon blesses you, please rate, review, and subscribe. Also, like and follow our Instagram for some of my favorite moments from from today's episode. Let's continue our Matthew series by looking at Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 in the ESV version. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither, eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. Amen. Three points for you. Number one, the need to stop being childish, the problem with being childish, and then the solution. First part is the need, and I want to talk to you about catching the train, because a Christian's way into the kingdom of God is like catching a train. Imagine a runaway train that is the only way to get to your destination. If you miss this train, you're stuck. Without family, without money, without any way of getting home, what do you do? You catch that train by all means. You run, you jump, you dive, you scream, you hold on to dear life. Mm -hmm. Because in Matthew eleven twelve, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force, mm -hmm. which means the way into the kingdom of God is not gentle and soft. It takes seizing, jumping, choosing, and going, mm -hmm. even if it feels a little bit scary mm -hmm. to trust God. And there comes a time in every Christian's life where we have to grow up. Christians can't just expect faith to happen to them. They must grab a hold of faith and walk in it. If you sit back and watch the train of heaven go by thinking, I have time, or I'm too scared to jump, then you'll miss it. Jesus's generation in the first century had childish faith instead of childlike. They wouldn't choose. They'd rather sit and watch and argue while the faith train left the station. In life, there's Past, present, and future. The past is gone, the present is now, and the future is coming. And the present is like a passing train we must board to enter the kingdom of God. If you remain still, the present keeps flying by like a door of that train. And before you go all in with God, you must catch up to the door of that train, match its speed of the present, and then jump. Because God's train is here, and I know you hear it. I know you feel like the rushing air of the presence of this train. You must decide if you're going to board it or not. Because like Joshua, he says, choose today who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that brings us to the problem of being childish, mm. choosing. And specifically, Jesus tells us, choose a game. If you look at the next verse in Matthew 11, that Lokilani read, Jesus tells us we got to choose a game. Religious people are like spiritual Karens. They're hard to please. Jesus says in Matthew 11 that they're like children who can't decide on a game to play. One day, Jesus chooses to observe children playing in the marketplace. 
Half the group wanted to play wedding and dance along to the sound of a happy flute. The other wanted to play funeral and cry along to the sound of a sad dirge. These kids don't know what a wedding is. They don't know what a funeral is. They're just copying what they see adults do. They had not made any of these experiences their own. You see, they were just playing games. Thus, they couldn't decide what to play. All this wedding and funeral stuff wasn't real to them. So there was no urgency to choose a game. And Jesus is asking, do you really know what's going on at the spiritual funeral and the spiritual wedding? Because in Jesus's day, they, <clears throat> they loved John as a prophet. So they wouldn't dare like say that he worked for Satan, but they said stuff like in Matthew 11, he has a demon, which means he's crazy. Mm. He's a maniac. Jesus was called glutton and drunkard, which means basically party animal because he was always healing diseases and casting out demons and preaching God's kingdom at parties where they drank and ate. And every Christian is called to attend their own funeral. That's what John the Baptist's message was. Repent, die, bury your old life because the Messiah is here. And likewise, every Christian is invited to their own wedding. Jesus's message is get up, get dressed. Let's party. You're engaged. A new life is knocking at your door. Let's enjoy. You know, as a kid, I would, I would go to funerals and weddings. I didn't know what was going on. And I would just like sit there and like watch everybody. Um, but now as an adult, when we go on vacation somewhere or to a different city and we see, or we go to the beach because we live in Hawaii, people get married on the beach all the time. When you see a wedding on the beach or you see a funeral procession go down the road, there's something that grips your heart. And we stop and we stare. God uses the seriousness of a funeral or the excitement of a wedding to call you into the kingdom of God, to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Which one do you see? That's the question. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is asking. The hard truth of dying to yourself or the beautiful grace of being invited to celebrate your wedding. Mm. Jesus is calling you to choose a game, wedding or funeral. The Bible says childish people will not choose because they're too hard to please. Okay, if think about it this way. If Jesus and John had, had Karens, Christian, you're going to have Karens too. Remember, religious people are like spiritual Karens. They're hard to please. So don't play their little game. One day you'll be gracious and they'll call you soft. Another day you'll be truthful and they'll call you harsh. Then you'll try to be both. And you'll sit back and say, surely they can't argue with this. But spiritual Karens and Darrens will always find something to argue about mm -hmm. because they're spiritually immature, the Bible says in Matthew 11. So don't play their little game. Just keep walking by faith. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the solution. Jesus is always right. That's what verse 19 says. Wisdom is justified by her deeds. Whenever you're stuck in life and you don't know what to do, look at what Jesus did. Jesus tells us that people who don't catch the train or choose a game will eventually see that he was right all along. Matthew eleven nineteen, 19, wisdom is justified by her deeds. He is saying the works of John and the works of Jesus are evidence that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. He's telling us to go from childish faith to choosing to give your all to God. You must see that Jesus had a funeral so you could have a wedding. Weddings in the Bible required a price for the bride. The guy had to pay the father for his daughter's hand in marriage. The price would be a lot. So the groom was essentially laying down his life to have his bride. This is what Jesus did for us. Because of our sin, someone perfect had to pay with his life. The father is holy, perfect, righteous, and just. So we were doomed to be, to be locked inside of our room of eternity <clears throat> because of our sin. But he is so gracious. So what he does, he sends his son to a funeral so we could have a wedding. But in Mark 14, 36, right before the funeral, it hits Jesus whose funeral it is, mm. his. He definitely knew this already, but the reality of it was crushing him in that moment as he prayed, Abba, Father, 
If there's any other way, let this cup of suffering pass for me, yet not my will, your will be done. Because of his love for the father and his love for the bride, the church, he attended his own funeral so you and I could attend a wedding. But the thing with this wedding is, if we're going to marry Jesus, there's got to be a funeral for us too. Mm -hmm. You see, since Jesus married us, we must die first. We can't attend this wedding with our dirty street clothes on. We must change into the spotless clothes that he paid for us. You know, he, we must die to our old ways before entering the wedding. This is what the parable of the wedding feast in, in Matthew 22 is all about. There's no wedding without a funeral. And this is why weddings are so serious and postponed in our culture because people don't want to die. They don't want to stop having girls nights. They don't want to stop playing video games with the boys. They don't want to stop surfing whenever they want, going to the gym whenever they want. They don't want to give up their freedom. But that's not freedom. Mm -hmm. Always doing what you want makes you a slave to who? To you. Choosing to lay down your wants for someone else makes you in control of you. That's true power. That's dying to self. That's marriage. That's love. Jesus had a funeral with sin so you could have a wedding with God. Because Christianity is not all about giving up stuff. It's about gaining love. It's not about, look at how much I'm sacrificing. It's about being merciful. Mm -hmm. It's about being gracious. It's about living by love. We're not under the law anymore. We're under the law of grace and love. Mm. We're motivated by love. That's what drove Jesus to the cross. That's what drove him to a funeral so we could have a wedding. Are you catching that train? Have you caught that train? Have you chose a game? Mm. Father, we thank you so much for your son who laid down his life so we could have life. Lord, help us to not play the game of spiritual Karen and um, not feel like we have to please or dance around for um, those who just don't get it and don't want to get it. Yet help us not to be spiritual mm -hmm. Karens, Lord, where we just don't want to choose to listen to your truth or to be softened by your grace. Help us to be decisive in our walk with you like your son was. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the part of the episode called After the Amen, where we ask you a question to help you apply this message to your life. And our question today is, how are you being childish? How are you being childish? And as always, I'll go first. And um, this was just so good. And... Um, I could see it from both ways, like how I can at times be a spiritual Karen, um, but also, um, you know, thinking of sometimes some of the spiritual Karens in my life and uh, how I let, you know, their criticism or whatever it is get to me and really, I can at times really become enslaved to their opinions and um, let it just put me in like a mental spiral. Um, but the question, how are you being childish? I think, yeah, at times I can be childish, um, in the way of like, I don't know how long ago it was eight years ago. We, Alex had this hashtag on Instagram, bring God back to culture. And, um, it was all just like, we need more Christians sharing their faith online. And, Fast forward to 2023, uh, what 2020 brought was the, an influx of, you know, Christian influencers online. And yes, that doesn't mean I have to recommend every single Christian influencer or tell people like, just watch whatever you see on there. That's great. Like, I don't have to do that. But I can at times find myself being hypercritical because maybe I wouldn't do something the way that some of Christian influencers are doing it. And, um, you know, it's a, definitely okay not to gr agree with sinful behaviors, but I think the best thing for me to do is just like, okay, like 
maybe I wouldn't do it that way, but it's not up to me mm-hmm. to know like what the Lord has helped them or spoken to them or help them kind of like formulate how to do mm-hmm, this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and move on and then stay in my lane and keep doing what we're doing, you yeah, know, not yeah. like, Oh, get, be so consumed. Like, Oh, that's not good. And you know, they're going to influence other people to not do to do, you know, like, yeah. and just like, just let it be and move on and keep doing what we're doing, you know, um, and allow the Lord to just, you know, bring insight and wisdom into people's lives on what's good to consume and what's not good to consume. I'm not the Lord. Like yeah. that's not my role. And I'm um, submitting to that brings me freedom and also allows me to love others. Yeah. Um, better. And so I just, I love what you said about, you know, gaining love and the law of grace. And even with your other, your Amon Alex video kind of saying like, we need to be pleasing people to be around. And that's like our job not to be people pleasers, but to be pleasing people to be around. And I think that's so good. And when we are tempted to be childish or a spiritual Karen or Darren, um, it's because, like, sometimes, at least in my life, it's like I don't want to feel, yeah, um, like the brokenness around me. You know, like I, I desire something greater for someone or mm-hmm. something, and so I don't want to feel it, and then give it to the Lord. So, like, it's easy to put up the wall of like criticism or like I'm just going to protect myself from mm-hmm. these type of people because, like, what really is is like some of the decisions they're making are breaking, breaking my heart, you know, cause I've been there before and I know that it doesn't bring life and I want better for them. And in some ways, maybe I feel like I have encouraged, you know, them to be better and maybe they're not walking in that way yeah. at this point in their life. But I must remember the times when I was not walking closely with the Lord and my life wasn't always reflecting him, you mm-hmm. know, and at times, of course, now too, when, um, you know, we have shortcomings and our life isn't always looking like Christ, but that's what the beauty of repentance. And I think that's what the world needs to see is repentant Christians, you know, being honest with their sin, but also walking in freedom and walking in the ways of righteousness. And so, um, this was just so good and I'm so grateful for this podcast um, and the work you put in to, to just really highlight what scripture is saying. Oh, thank you. I like what you were saying about like people online and Christians online and how we can be very critical of them. It's so easy mm-hmm. to stand behind the glass of our phone and mm-hmm. point fingers. Mm-hmm. It's a one way mirror. Mm-hmm. And if Jesus says that Christians, if Jesus says the world will know us by our love, then they won't know us. If our lives are full of hate, full of hate, yeah, you know, like yes. if if Jesus says Christians will be known by their love, then if we're filled with hate, they won't know who we are. And I think online we see a lot of Christians pointing fingers at each other, saying, "Well, they're doing this wrong, they're doing that wrong." We need less of that and more just general love for one another. Like this is why the world doesn't like us. Part of the reason why they don't like us is part of the reason why people are so reluctant to believe what we believe is because when they get online, they either see us acting silly, making jokes about Christianity, Mm -hmm. which no other religion really does that, makes fun of their faith. Yeah. Or they see us fighting. They see us arguing, going live with each other and pointing out how the other person's wrong. It's ridiculous and it's really childish. Yeah. And that's why we call this episode childish because we have to get from childish to childlike faith Mm -hmm. for the world to be like, wow, that's attractive. I see why. They love Jesus. Mm -hmm. I see why they believe that old, dusty, ancient book because it's inspired. Because only inspiration from the Holy Spirit can make Christians live that way and love each other, even at times when they don't like each other. Mm -hmm. Only God could do that. And that's where we have to get. And that only we only get there by seeing Jesus attend his own funeral. Mm. That is crazy to think about what he did. And we really have to let ourselves, like like Lokilani says, feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the hard part is we have to let ourselves feel it and we have to give it to God. Mm-hmm. But the uh, the idea that he, it hits him what he's going to have to do and he still goes through with it. Yep. Yes. Is absolutely 
astronomically crazy. And he did that so we could have a wedding. Yeah. We don't deserve, like, it's like the book of Hosea. You know, we cheated on God. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve to mm -hmm. have a wedding. We don't mm -hmm. deserve to be bought back from our slavery, yeah. from our sin. Yeah. We don't deserve that. And yet that's what he did Yep. to get us. He, he really loves us. He really mm -hmm. loves you as his bride. Yep. And he was willing to give up everything to have you. Mm -hmm. That's like the beauty of the gospel. And it, it will melt you if you let it melt you. So good. Yep. If you love this podcast and it this sermon blessed you and you want to support our ministry and keep us ad free, um, amenpodcast.com, amenpodcast.com. The links to our Instagram, YouTube, website, everything's in the description. Um, but first, if you'd like to reply to this message, um, the question is, what again? How are you being childish? Yes. No judgment. But uh, let's be honest with each other, and we love you. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, go out and be the church. Amen.